Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and today we're going to be talking about 3D printed gearboxes and this little guy to start with, this here is actually a 3D printed gearbox uh, designed by another YouTube channel called Gear Down For What and if you're interested in kind of really useful or really interesting use cases for 3D printing I would uh, suggest going and checking out Gear Down For What's channel. Uh, this is a really, really cool little gearbox. Unfortunately, I think I've printed a couple of uh, parts wrong here, so it's actually not fitting together very well. I've also printed it in a transparent PLA, which uh, transparent PLA is great for some things, but not for others. And in this case, it's very rigid, and all of the edges are very, very sharp. I don't know what it is about transparent PLA, but... Um, yeah, like I said, it's a little bit more rigid and it's a little bit more uh, fragile stuff too, which is definitely a more shatterable plastic than anything else. I have talked about this before on the channel, so I really shouldn't have gone for this, but I was looking for something uh, that was going to make a really, really cool little display, and unfortunately, uh, as you can see, this gearbox hasn't fit together, so I do need to reprint some stuff. I'm going to reprint all of this in a regular PLA and uh, try it out again. But the point of today's video is actually I wanted a new drive system for a combat robot and I got some little brushless motors off of Hobby King a little while ago and these things are really really cool and I've always wanted to put a brushless motor into a combat robot but it presents the challenge of actually gearing it down correctly and having that run wheels. So I wanted to get a bit of a, a gear ratio going on this thing before we jam it into the wheels and I thought that this gear down for what gearbox is, was going to be the way to do it. Unfortunately, uh, A, this one didn't print correctly and B, getting this thing together is quite complicated and also getting it to mount to the shaft is actually going to be quite complicated as well because I need to be able to change these gearboxes over relatively quickly if one of these gearboxes were to break. Now, Gear Down For What has shown some pretty impressive stuff with some of the gearboxes. Unfortunately, not this one and unfortunately not one that would allow me to make weight with the robot I'm thinking about building. Uh, so we need to kind of put this thing to the side for now I am definitely going to come back and redo some gear down for what gearboxes in the future uh, I haven't really had enough time to get this thing together uh, it did I did print these parts a little while ago so I really do need to double check what I actually printed and make sure that I actually got everything right because as you can see I haven't got this thing together very well I haven't phased the gears up either which is a thing that needs to happen otherwise it jams up as mine has uh, so yeah, definitely something that we need to work on. But for now, I am going to go back to a pretty standard gearbox. I'm going to go to a two uh, system gearbox. So the first phase is going to be plastic 3D printed gears and they are going to be like a 5 to 1 reduction, I think. And then I'm going to belt drive another 3 to 1 reduction to give an overall 15 to 1 off of this guy. And then I'm going to use relatively large wheels or at least larger wheels than I've used before. Uh, to get the robot moving. So let's go ahead and have a look at designing that up. So to try and get this gearbox to actually work and not be quite as fiddly to put together, uh, as I said before, as much as I do love that gear down for what gearbox, uh, trying to take that thing apart and put it back together again under pressure when things are broken is going to be quite a pain. So I'm going to go back to a conventional just gear to gear gearbox, uh, not a planetary style. And I'm going to stack a couple of different ratios. So I found uh, GearGenerator.com, which is a really actually quite a cool little gear generator. It's really helpful for doing this kind of work. So I've got these two gears here, this one and the big one, and they give around about a five to one ratio. Um, so I want to try and stack these a little bit. So we'll we'll do a couple of runs of those, maybe do a 20 to 1 gearbox or a 15 to 1 gearbox and then do a belt drive off the gearbox itself uh, to kind of push that 15 to 1 or 20 to 1 up to around 60 somewhere. Um, so that's kind of the plan right now. I just need to uh, save these things as SVGs load them into some modeling software and see just how big they are actually going to be. So the robot these things are going to go in should have a decent amount of space inside. Um, I just need to make sure that I am actually going to have enough space, especially for this big gear here. Also, as you can see, uh, by messing around with the settings here, I've made some very substantial looking teeth. 
so I'm a lot happier with these guys and hopefully uh, these won't actually break the teeth off, which is the, the big issue that I did think was going to happen with that uh, smaller tooth gear down for what planetary gearbox. Anyway, this is going pretty well, so I'm going to uh, mock up a little gearbox for this thing, get some prints going, and hopefully we can have this thing connected into that brushless motor very, very soon. Okay, so now we actually have a bit of a test rig done up. Let's see if I can get some light into this thing for you. Uh, so there is actually a gear all the way down on the inside there, um, and it is actually moving. And when I turn the motor, you can see that this output gear here turns. And conversely, I can actually do the other way around too, because of course it is just a drivetrain. Uh, so. I uh, didn't get really to show too much of the design work of this guy on camera uh, from the computer just because for some reason when I pulled those uh, gear files in from online it put like hundreds and hundreds of tiny little faces down each tooth of the gear which meant that uh, my computer started chugging along whenever I moved the big gear around a lot and it meant that I just could not record too much of that design process. But this is actually the big gear here or at least the first iteration of the big gear. Uh, so it is just the kind of practice gear and it's got a hot, nice little recess in here to fit a standard skateboard bearing into. And then the little U-shaped piece of plastic that I've got here has just got holes that will hold an 8 mil or an M8 bolt, which is what is a perfect size to fit those skateboard bearings in. So as you can see, design this up to have a, uh, a set of gears on either side. I'm thinking now though that uh, due to space constraints I might only drive one wheel uh, per side, so have a two wheel drive rather than a uh, four wheel drive which is what I was aiming for. I'm just looking at the size of everything that's going on right now and I can't really squeeze that down anymore. So as I said earlier in the video I do want to go back and look at that uh, gear down to what gearbox at some point and that will probably help. Uh, to reduce the size of all of this stuff and then actually allow me to do that four to one uh, Sorry four-wheel drive gears uh, four-wheel drive combat robot I should say but There as you can see just down in the bottom there There is that extra gear attached to the output shaft that at the moment is just a pressure fit uh, Of course when I go to do it into a real combat robot it will have a captive uh, not in the plastic and then it will also have a bolt to hold it onto that output shaft just a little bit better but for now that is actually doing what it's supposed to be doing so I want to go ahead and change the design up a little bit and actually get an output onto this thing so that we can run a belt drive okay so belt drive time as you can see I've got two new versions of the large gear and these two have different iterations of the belt drive system on them, corresponding to the two different belts I have on the table. This one here is a silicon belt, uh, which is actually designed to go on Lego. Um, and I've got a few of these lying around the house, but because they stretch so much, uh, these are not going to be a very good belt to actually run in a combat robot, because that amount of stretch is eventually just going to keep stretching and then it's just going to break or it's going to loosen and I'm going to lose drive on one side because I've lose, uh, lost a belt uh, because it's just loosened up and that's really really not good so I'm going to get rid of that guy for now and that means getting rid of this guy so this is obviously designed with an output that holds onto the uh, underside of the belt with the teeth there but that really didn't work out for us too well at all but as you can see this is actually designed so We've got a nice little slot for our uh, skateboard bearing in the bottom and a slot for the skateboard bearing in the top. So hopefully the bolt would go through and hold onto the both skateboard bearings on either side. That would give us a nice surface to run on. 
Uh, so following that kind of idea, I haven't cleaned this guy up yet because I haven't actually got everything else ready to go. Um, but we have another hole underneath for a new skateboard bearing. This one is currently full of infill, but I'll clean that up before hopefully the next thing, which is going to be uh, bolting this stuff down to a just uh, probably a piece of cutting board and running this thing around and seeing how it goes. So the new belt that I've got here is a toothless belt. It's actually off of a vacuum cleaner or out of a vacuum cleaner because uh, the competition that I want to run this in is getting pretty close now. So I needed to go and find a belt uh, that was better than this one and shorter than this one. Uh, so vacuum cleaners soon turned out to be the easiest thing to get hold of at short notice, especially for this nice strong type of belt. And as you can see, there is very little stretch in this. There is a little bit, but there is nowhere near as much as the uh, silicon belt down here, because this is actually a proper rubber belt, which should do some really good things. So I've got that output there. I'm now currently printing up uh, new wheel inserts for the wheels that I want to use. So once we've got those printed, I'll also print some wheel mounts and a new version of that uh, motor and gearbox holder that I showed you earlier, the one in purple, because I want to go through, like I said, and mount this up, but I am only going to do uh, two-wheel drive for that to start with. I've also got my hands on a couple of motor controllers, so everything going well. The next stuff that we see should be running around with a, uh, a little piece of cutting board attached to this gearbox set, the belt drive, and the wheels. Hopefully! Fingers crossed! <laughs> okay, so we're out here on my workbench, and this stuff is actually now all plugged in and working, as you can see. Got all the plugs set up, I've got my two ESCs, there's a battery out the back there which is powering everything, and I have my two drive uh, gearboxes set up. Sorry about the 3D printing noise in the background, I have some more 3D printing I need to do, but as you can see, these guys now actually work. Uh, there is a small issue you can see over here with belt slip. Uh, that's actually because I haven't got this done completely and totally. Uh, as you can see, there's nuts missing down here, and these are regular nuts, not lock um, nylock nuts. That's because, as you can see over here, these nut, uh, these bolts are way too long. I don't actually have all the bolts I need, and these brackets can actually wobble around a bit. So I need to get the right bolts tighten everything down properly and then that belt slip will actually uh, will be fine but as you can see it does indeed work a little bit at least until those belt slips and uh, causes some issues but until those belt slip everything works pretty fine and as you can see I don't get belt slip on this side I get belt slip on this side uh, because as I said this isn't uh, mounted down correctly but once it is everything should be fine so I'm pretty happy with all of this and how this is going. Uh, check back in next week when I will actually go through the entire bot that this is being bolted into. As you can see, there's a base plate here and there are some extra holes down in the base plate down here, which are for something a little bit more special. Uh, so yeah, check back in next week and I'll do a bit of an overview of what this bot is and what I'm going to be doing with it. So this is where this video was supposed to end, however I didn't actually have a chance to get it all edited and get it up, it was supposed to go up last week and then last weekend I was actually out in uh, Brisbane fighting at the Robot Wars Nationals competition. There was a few bits and pieces that went drastically wrong for me in that, but you have to look into a video that comes out next week and when I discuss all of the stuff that happened at uh, Robot Wars Nationals. But I just wanted to quickly mention that while I was there, even though I didn't get to run the bot that had 3D printed gears, there were some other robots there with 3D printed gears. This current fight is actually a fight between Frags and Vanguard. Now Vanguard is a robot built by another YouTuber uh, who runs a channel called Makers Muse here and he has actually 3D printed a couple of gears in his robot that protect the output shaft of a very expensive gearbox and these are really really cool but they are printed in polycarbonate and even when they were printed in polycarbonate he still actually had a couple shatter so I probably need to go back to the drawing board and do a little bit more testing and research on 3D printed gears but that is something we're going to be talking about next week when I go through uh, what actually happened at nationals and what I've learned from the whole thing.